First off, uh, can anybody recognize this, the music that was playing in the background? Anybody recognize that music? Anyone? Instrumental? Big, big pop star in, in town this weekend, I understand. We got any uh, Swifters in the room? Or is it Swifties? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I, 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 as many of you know, we're going to get started, folks, so if we can get your attention. As many of you know, I have three teenage daughters, and I made the mistake of calling them Swifters, and they immediately laughed at me and said, Dad, that's the mop in the closet. We're, we're Swifters. Uh, so that was very embarrassing. Anyway, I do want to, um, I want to introduce somebody who's new to Brockton and is making a very positive impression on all, a lot of us, bringing experience from Boston. Natalie Jean is the new uh, director of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Natalie, yeah, stand up, give us a wave. And I hope you have a chance to say hello to her and, and uh, say hello to Kadi, who's with her, and, and there are seven interns from uh, Southeastern Tech who are here with us as well. So welcome, all of you. <clears throat> So good afternoon, I'm Chris Cooney. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 32nd Annual Small Business and Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. Uh, today is about inspired, hardworking people who have taken action toward their vision to start a small business. We are here to honor their perseverance and celebrate their success. We are delighted to join Bank of America during Small Business Month to celebrate two extraordinary businesses who you will hear more about later on. Bank of America was established in 1904. Today it is the second largest bank in America with more than $2 trillion in assets and 2,500 locations located throughout the United States. Bank of America serves 3 million small businesses and employs more than 200,000 people. We are happy to have a number of them with us today, including Nancy Rosedale and her team featuring Carrie Mullen a former colleague uh, who worked here at the Chamber uh, at Metro South, but also ran the Taunton Area Chamber of Commerce for a number of years. Please join me in a round of applause for Bank of America and their team. I would also like to thank today's supporting sponsor, Mass Hire of Greater Brockton, the Workforce Board and their team led by Sheila Sullivan Jarnum and Jason Hunter. Mass Hire is a business-led policy setting board that oversees workforce development initiatives in a 10 community region centered here in Brockton. Mass Hire, along with the mayor of Brockton, charters the Greater Brockton Career Center. Many of you are familiar with that. It's a one-stop career center operated by the University of Massachusetts Dunahue Institute, uh, located just across the street from City Hall and the Chamber of Commerce in that center. Mass Hire leverages resources with community leaders in response to current employment trends in our region. Let's have a round of applause for Sheila and Jason and the whole team. At this time, I encourage you to enjoy the wonderful lunch provided by Thorny Lee. I know Rich and Sharon were here helping us get all set up, so let's have a round of applause for our hosts. I encourage you to continue eating uh, through our speaking program. That's how it's set up to make best use of your time uh, overall. Before I introduce our MC for today, allow me to mention a few things that you might be interested in the next few weeks. The Chamber is excited to announce, a, a uh, announce it is promoting a new Leadership Metro South program. It's modeled after the Leadership South Shore program that many of you may have heard of. This program selects participants from a pool of applicants and leads them through a year-long experiential and immersive learning curriculum designed to raise awareness and foster professional growth. These programs are very popular throughout the United States in many cities like Brockton and Quincy and others. Applications are now available at SouthShoreBank.com. They're the major sponsor and initiator of this uh, and we're happy to, to, to be partnering with them. Uh, the first meeting will be held in September, but the applications have to be filled out now and you have to be selected now. So once those, uh, that programming starts in September, there'll be nine more meetings after that. Throughout, it'll be at, at sites throughout uh, the Metro South region, and you'll get to know and see places that you otherwise wouldn't. So it's an exciting uh, opportunity for folks who are uh, building their career or are new to the region and want to get more familiar or develop a cohort of about 26 to 30 people who you'll get to know. You'll be traveling on a bus with them and all of that. So the cost is nominal. I believe it's under $500, and there are some scholarships as well. So if you're interested, please um, 
uh, head out to uh, southshorebank.com. The Chamber is advertising a regional restaurant week, Sunday, June 4th to Thursday, June 8th. There are so many great and diverse restaurants in this region. Really take a chance to, to try a new one. And if you have a favorite, um, please help us out. Grab a sign from out front and just ask them. All they need to do this year, because of issues with staffing and, and other things, we're just asking them to put a sign out front and let us know they're participating. We will take information from their website. We'll put it out on social media and promote their restaurant for the month of June. So it's free. It's easy. If you have a restaurant, <laughs> look at Nelson here. He has a, a connections to a lot of restaurants. Just ask them to put the sign out front. Let us know. We'll, we'll get a photo. We ask to take a photo of anybody who you give a sign to. Send it to us, and we'll get it out on social media. And then lastly, um, please join us for a business after hours reception featuring Abington Ale House. Everybody loves Ab Abington Ale House, right? It's on Wednesday, May 24th, next Wednesday, at Abington Bank in Holbrook. It's their Holbrook yeah. location from 5 to 7.30. This has become a tradition uh, every year for the last seven years. It's kind of a Memorial Day themed uh, after hours uh, with great food from Abington Ale House and beer, beer of course, and wine. Um, and Red Sox tickets. The bank gives away quite a few Red Sox tickets. You have to be there to win. So we hope to see you. It's a free event. Uh, so please just come on out uh, next Wednesday in Holbrook at Abington Bank. It's now my pleasure to, to uh, welcome our MC this afternoon. Please join me in welcoming Chair of the Chamber's Board of Directors and President of Barber Corporation, Rich Hines. Rich. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's an honor to participate in this very special awards program as we celebrate the success of two special businesses and their contributions to the local economy. There are over 32 million small businesses in the United States. Small businesses are the backbone of our country, accounting for 60 to 80 percent of all new jobs each year. In 1963, President John F. Kennedy created National Small Business Week to honor small business owners and the value small businesses bring to America. Today's Small Business Week has evolved into Small Business Month, which affords even more opportunity to honor these individuals uh, whose impact extends far beyond their reach, touching the lives of their peers, their families, and their successors, and inspiring the minds of budding entrepreneurs everywhere. Today's recipients will join a long list of triumphant business people and entrepreneurs who's used their ingenuity to adapt to changing economic and social climates, to grow and thrive in business. When I think about our businesses in this region, I'm amazed at the large and diverse number of industries represented. On each year tables is the current guide to Metro South region. Uh, this book uh, has information about all of our member businesses and also some interesting demographic, demographics about our region. Now in a couple of months, uh, the Chamber will uh, be releasing a brand new guide, an updated uh, guide, and the Chamber plans to uh, distribute 7,500 books to the area in every, every business, whether or not they're, they're a Chamber uh, member or not. Uh, to learn more about this dynamic region, pick up one at your table, or you can check out an electronic version online. Now I'd like to mention uh, uh, some of our chamber members in attendance. I'm not sure, is Mike, is Mike Lambert here? I don't, I'm not, he is, I, I didn't see Mike. Mike, stand, there you go, over there, Mike Lambert, uh, Brockton Area Transit Authority. <laughs> Nelson Fernandez, JJ's Cafe. Ray De Pasquale, Massasoit Community College. Oops, sorry. Carol Chen, McDonald's franchisee. I'd also like to uh, thank our Chamber Ambassadors in attendance today. Mary Jane Anin, uh, Combined Insurance of America. Joanne Schneider, Eastern Bank. Catherine Light, Eastern Bank. Suzanne Fernandez, Northeastern Savings Bank. Brenda Cairns, Old Colony Elder Services. Richard Hook, SCU Credit Union. Felicita Sapluvida, Cape Verdean Association of America. Candy Mascarenas, 
Brockton Redevelopment Authority. I hope I pronounced that somewhat close. All right. And finally, we have uh, with us some elected officials who recognize the importance of celebrating small businesses within the community. Senator Mike Brady. <laughs> Representative Rita Mendez. John Messier, representing the office of uh, Mayor Sullivan. <laughs> now, my pleasure to uh, in introduce our interviewer today, Masha Kambabe from Kambabe Immigration Law. Um, she's going to interview our premier sponsor today, Bank of America. Join me in your chair. It's so nice to have with us today our premier sponsor, Bank of America. We're pleased to be joined by Nancy Rosedale. <laughs> Nancy B. Rosedale is the New England South Small Business Banking Manager, a team she proudly leads and was once part of going back to 2011. In her role, Nancy leads a team of 14 bankers who are dedicated to making an impact on communities of Rhode Island and southeastern Massachusetts. Prior to her business banking career, Nancy held a number of uh, leadership positions within the residential mortgage industry and was a commercial real estate investor for many years. Nancy received her Bachelor of Arts in English from Merrimack College and a commercial lending certificate from the New England College of Business and Finance. Please welcome Nancy Rose. Nancy, it's so great to be able to talk to you. I had the chance to speak with you a little earlier, and the work that you do is really incredible. Sure. So I'd love for you to start off in telling us a little bit about the landscape for small business owners, especially because of your experience in really getting out there in the community, talking to small businesses, getting to know them. What are you seeing, and what are your clients telling you? It's a great question. So first off, thank you for having me. Uh, you guys look great today. Thanks for coming. Um, for those of you who have not met me before, um, I've been with the bank for about 10 years or so, and I've worked in small business my entire career at Bank of America. One of the reasons is because of our dedication to small business. So some of you may or may not be familiar with the Small Business Owners Report that we publish twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. And it's an awesome survey that goes out to over 1,000 clients and we really get an understanding as to what small business owners are thinking about. What are they worried about? What are they excited about? And small business, by definition of Bank of America, is really clients who generate between 500,000 and about five to 10 million dollars. So those are the clients that we surveyed. And the recent edition just came out last week, coincidentally. What we were told is that most business owners are concerned about inflation, no surprise there. They're worried about a recession, another, you know, no surprise, and they're having problems staffing. <coughs> but one thing that we've all realized about small business owners is their resiliency. Think about what we just experienced with the pandemic. 83% of our clients have told us that they've pivoted, they've changed their business model, they're more digital now. So they're working with contactless, you know, um, payment methods. They enhance their digital marketing so they don't have to go face to face to see their clients. And I'm happy to report that there is an extreme amount of heavy optimism in the small business community. Um, seven of 10 clients believe that their revenues are going to grow in 2023. And 80% reported that revenues grew year over year from 22 to 21. So I, I think um, the message today is that it may feel in some markets like it's doom and gloom, but it's really not. Small business owners are a resilient, uh, strong, courageous group of people. Well, that's good to know. I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm starting to panic sometimes on oh, how you know how difficult it is to find you know staff and that sort of thing. So I will keep you in mind. I'll channel your energy. So now tell us what do you think the pandemic taught small businesses? Uh, and how has it changed certain businesses as they go to market? What are some of the developments there? That's a fair question. I think it changed us all, right? How we um, 
embrace personal relationships, business relationships. I think what we've seen most is, again, what I said earlier, small business owners have learned to pivot. So they no longer do business in the same manner that they did 10, 15 years ago, uh, whether it's offering digital solutions, um, an online website versus going to market face to face. My bank will tell you um, that some of their clients prefer to meet over a Zoom or a WebEx versus face to face. Um, so I, I think the other thing that we learned is you have to have a, a backup plan. And hence, we've, saw, we've seen more lending in the last two years, I think, than ever before. In fact, Bank of America was just recognized as the top lender amongst small businesses for calendar year 2022. And we hope that's going to continue. So in short, Masa, I feel that small businesses have a contingency plan now that they never had before. Now they're thinking if the global pandemic, a market interrupter can happen once, guess what? It could happen again. So this time we want to be reassured that we have a solid business plan. You know, when I think about how my practice has changed and other lawyers' practices has changed and the reliance on technology and Zoom and all of that, and should there be another type of pandemic, we're much more equipped to deal with those changes. And so tell us lastly about Bank of America's outlook for the remainder of 2023. Well, I think I work for the right company because you can tell I'm an optimist, optimistic person. Um, Bank of America's outlook is just that. We are very optimistic. We have various offers, promotions. We have 62 small business bankers out in, working in the field with small business owners throughout New England. Um, we have fantastic interest rates. A lot of us think that rates are high, but I'm actually old enough to remember 1980. Is there anyone in the room who can tell me, besides my team, what was prime rate in 1980? Anyone? Nope. 17? Higher. 21. 21%. And what's prime rate today, guys? Eight and a quarter. So rates are higher, but they're not high. So we would be very optimistic that we have the capital left hand. We have $3 trillion in assets at Bank of America, and we are ready to uh, help our clients access that capital, grow, scale their businesses, and have the best year yet. And we thank you and your team for everything you do and really wanting to hear from small business owners. I can't wait to read that report. And um, as a token of our appreciation, present you with this pen. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful you with this. Huh? <laughs> uh, I get the better end of the deal. All right. Thank you so much, Nancy. Bye-bye. Try to get this microphone to stop drooping on me so that you can all hear me uh, in the back. I'm now thrilled to introduce our keynote uh, speaker for today's event, Di Diane Darling. Diane Darling is a consultant, keynote speaker, instructor, and leadership coach with more than 20 years of experience researching, developing, and educating on the role of professional networking strategies, playing both individual career development and broader business performance. She's the author of several books, including The Networking Survival Guide and Networking for Career Success. As an instructor, she has taught at Harvard Business School, the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania, 20th Century Fox, Cisco Systems, Bank of America, and University of Texas Law School. Her media appearances include NBC Nightly News, the Wall Street Journal, San Francisco Chronicle, and the Boston Globe. Please join me in welcoming Diane Darling. Thank you so much. One of my favorite speeches I've ever done was at MIT Charm School. It actually exists. 
And uh, when you're the, com I, I have fun about it. I was the commencement speaker at MIT Charm, MIT, and they're like, really, um, MIT Charm School? You add that pause. Um, and so there was salsa for scientists, dating for dummies. They had all kinds of different, uh, how to tie a bow tie, how to tell your roommate they need to get rid of the dishes in the sink. Um, it was a whole interesting collection. And the guy who started it, sadly, has since passed away. But his whole thing was, um, the people who are here are gifted in brilliance. But they can learn people skills. <laughs> so it was an interesting um, situation here. What I want to talk, who here has too much time on their hands? Anybody here have too much time? All right, glad we're in the right place. So we're going to talk about a pl something that's going to help you out with too much time, chat GPT. For those of you who haven't heard this, this is something that has gone crazy. And it is a huge time saver. And I'm going to give you kind of a put on your rollerblades, a 101 on this. So sit tight, and we're going to have some fun. So what does it stand for? Generative pre-trained transformer, which just really rolls off your tongue. Chris asked me the other day, when are they going to come up with something that's different? I don't know. So it's run by a company called OpenAI. There's another version of this with Bing, which is Microsoft's version of it. And they're kind of, kind of like Google and you know, uh, Bing or different things about this. I use both of them for different reasons. With Bing, you need to use Microsoft Edge, which is a challenge for me because I'm more on Chrome. But having said that, these are two really important things for you to think about and know. OK, this is the thing that absolutely amazed me. Anybody like Netflix? It took three and a half years for Netflix to get one million users. It took five days for ChatGBT to get a million users. So for people who are saying, why am I doing this? It's because it is a time saver. Now we're going to talk about some of the things that make people a little crazy as well. And you'll all get these slides that I'm sharing them and you'll all get them as well. I put these together. Um, so in, you know, Kickstarter took two and a half years, Airbnb two and a half years, you know, Dropbox, Instagram took two and a half months, five days, five days. All right. So it is a cutting, la cutting edge language, if you will, and, um, and I don't know that we're going to have time, but I, if we have a second, I'll, anybody who wants to think of something, we can ask ChatGPT and you can have a chance to see what it's about. And when I asked it, what is a chamber? Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll step back. So com different ways for you to use it. On your website, use it there. Job descriptions, I'll show you a sample job description. Um, product information, business plans, and social media posts. So, so there, those are some really good ways that you can use this. It also just came out, I think it was actually yesterday or this morning, on Gmail. So you can ask Gmail, how do I send an email to somebody who annoys me? And it'll <laughs> And then you can edit it. <laughs> That's the part. You still need to use your brain to adapt to this part. All right, so I asked it. The prompt question is, what is a chamber? It spit this out super fast. A chamber is an uh, organization that represents and promotes the interests of businesses. Here are some common activities. It kept going. And it kept typing this out as far as networking and connections, advocacy, business support, resources, economic development. It kept going. <laughs> Information and research, events. So part of what it is, is in probably about, a sec about 60 seconds, I got that whole description. So what, and, and it writes it, writes it, as, it as if I'm actually writing it. <laughs> And so part of what I, and I am a writer. My book, I think, is you're being gifted the book, uh, my, the Networking Survival Guide. I actually am a writer. Um, and so part of what it is is it really helps you streamline and make this faster. You still have to add it in. So I asked it, what is a bookkeeper to do? I want to write a job description for a bookkeeper. Bingo. A bookkeeper is responsible for financially managing, can you tell I'm nervous? I'm so nervous. <laughs> Oh, okay, deep breath. Managing financial records, maintaining accurate account, et cetera, et cetera. It kept going. It kept going. So what you do is you have this prompt down here at the bottom, and you type in the prompt. And the more clear you are about what you type in, the more streamlined of information you will get back. So if you say, gee, what, do, what, you know, what does a bank do? You're going to get something really vague. 
Now I will share with you actually, I typed in when Silicon Valley Bank um, collapsed. I wrote down that night, I did chat, and I said, what happened to Silicon Valley Bank and it didn't know it had collapsed yet. So these are some things for you to be sure. Now it might have changed by now. This was, when did Silicon Valley Bank collapse? March. March, okay, so it may be between March and now, it may have picked it up right away. Um, oh, somehow that slide got wrong. Anyhow, um, bookkeepers' regular responsibilities, recording financial transactions, maintaining general ledgers, reconciling. So it put all of this together in just a few moments for you to be able to take the time away from you having to write a job description. I don't know about you, but this does not scare me. This makes me realize it's going to save a lot of time. Now, the other thing I did was describe a pepperoni pizza. This was fun. It made me hungry, <laughs> but it made me fun. So a pepperoni pizza is a classic and popular, popular variation of a pizza that is enjoyed by many. It kept going, and it kept going. So if you are going to be writing a business plan for Bank of America on your pizza shop, and one of your hot ones was pepperoni pizza, you would want to have a description about that. And you could even ask for competitive information. You could ask what are the top pizzas that people have, put pictures in there and things like that. So it can pull these things together quite quickly. Here, where, here's where it does not work. I said, what, write a joke for small business owners. Why did the small business owner bring a ladder to the store? Because they heard the profits were climbing. <laughs> walk, walk. All right. <laughs> This is why John Stewart and all of them still hire writers. <laughs> still hire writers. And actually, this actually did give me heart palpitations because in order for me to get over my fear of public speaking, I took acting and stand-up comedy. I had to write all my own stuff, and that was terrifying. Cambridge Adult Ed, great course. <laughs> all right. Privacy and concerns about that. This is definitely something that we need to be aware of. So there are, this is a new platform. I just, everything's new, right? I just learned that this yesterday called Optic, and it tells you if it's artificial intelligence or not. So I uploaded my headshot, and it came back saying this was a human. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the other reason why this is near and dear to my heart as a writer is about when I was 14 or 15 living in rural Indiana, this would happen every year about now. Knock, knock on the door. I'd open up the door and there's a college student saying, is, your, is Dr. Darling here, my father? He was professor of chairman of political science at a small university in Indiana called DePauw, P-A-U-W. And this kid had plagiarized. And my dad was giving them a failure. And their plea was, Dr. Darling, will you please give me an incomplete? Grandma's coming. Everybody's coming for graduation. Now, I would often ask my dad, how did you know? And he said, well, when you've been around for a few years, sweetheart, and now that I'm his age, I can appreciate that, you can see the difference in writing from somebody in their young 20s or somebody who was more sophisticated. The other thing that shocked him was how many times they plagiarized him. <laughs> so you'd hear that you'd have this teary student who was, you know, like, really, buddy? You couldn't even, like, plagiarize some. I mean, darling is not a real common name in the world of political science. So this company, Optic, curiously enough, is started by a Russian. The Russians know a little bit of, about espionage. And to date myself, since you all think I'm only 29, um, I'm actually not. And in the early 80s, I took Americans all around the world as a tour leader. And I spent a number of summers in the Soviet Union. I would rig my room to see if they went through my Bible. They did. I would rig my room to see if they went through my suitcase. They did. One time, I came down for breakfast, and the gentleman on the tour said, boy, you were up really late calling people. And I'm like, I can promise you I was up not late t t calling people. And he said, well, somebody called my room last night and said, would you like a darling? I said, that was not me. Would you like a hooker? <laughs> Definitely wasn't me. The other thing, while well, I actually am on this op 
off, off. So when I went to get my TSA pre-clear, I actually went to Google to see um, what other Diane Darlings were there. And I, by the time I got to page about seven or eight, I found a Diane Darling who's the third in your marriage is, who, if your marriage is not working. This is also not me. But TSA <laughs> found her. TSA found her. So part of what I'm going to say to you is, you know, live a good life. <laughs> live an honorable life. Use these tools, but be aware of what they are. And also, it's really important for some of the things you want to think about when you use them, how to disclose them. Now, one thing I say is, chat isn't new. Anybody here ever been the victim of gossip? You know, bullying? Yeah. So people are chatting all the time. One of the things that is startling about this is how fast it travels and how little power we have to reclaim it. So those are some things that I think are really thoughtful for us, for us to use in our businesses. People can do screenshots. Back in the day when Facebook was maybe, I don't know if it's ever been locked down, but people said, oh, well, you can't see my pictures if you don't connect me. And I'm like, yeah, I can ask Chris if he's connected to you, show me the pictures. I do a screenshot, and guess what? I have the pictures of you partying when you say you're at work. <laughs> yeah. So you know, these are some things that we just need to be aware of what this is about. So here's some best practices on how and when to use um, chat. Include human interaction. So I use this a lot for idea generation. I'm giving some talks right now and helping out a company that does recycling of batteries. And they only have 8% women in their workforce. And they're mainly engineers. So I ask it questions about women engineering in recycling or clean tech. And it gives me ideas that you know, yes, I mean, for those of us who remember going to the library and looking up World Book <laughs> and those encyclopedia days, this just fast tracks that incredibly quickly that you can get this information. Always disclose you're using AI. So even in your job descriptions, partially created by AI. And so chat is a subset of AI, artificial intelligence. And so just disclose this. I don't think anybody's going to be upset about that. You know, how do I balance my checkbook? Quicken, <laughs> you know? In fact, for me, that was a godsend because I'm dyslexic. My brain is great, but I always got the numbers mixed up. So it made it so much more problematic. Technology made it so much faster and easier to do that and have it be something that made sense. Um, embrace the uncertainty. As I was driving here, I was thinking what it was like for, uh, and if you ever have a chance in um, Michigan to go see the Henry Ford Museum. It's just really amazing when you get to see all of the different innovations that happen. What would it have been like before a car when someone said, I, you know, I'm moving to a different town? You know, you were never going to possibly see them again. Anybody here been to um, Telluride in Colorado? Nope. Here's what it stands for. It's over the western slope to hell you ride. <laughs> because you go over the western slope and the chances of you living through that trip back in the day were very marginal. So the, so the gold rush people were really adventurous and crazy people. Imagine what that was like back then. So embrace this in uncertainty. Create some guidelines around your company about what you're going to use it for who knows about it, and what are some policies. I think this is just a good idea the whole way around. Um, test it out, open AI and Bing. And I use it as, again, as a brainstorming product, uh, brain, brainstorming more as a final product. And it's imperfect, so am I. News alert, <laughs> you know? It's an imperfect thing. So part of it is just helping us understand how to embrace that. All right, I'm also going to just share some of what I call a tech stack. This is kind of a phrase people hear off, often in business. Any remember when Microsoft Current came around and you had the 20 you know, CDs that you slotted in? And yeah, some people are old enough to at least willing to admit that they had 20 CDs that you put into the computer over and over and over again. Microsoft is still the, one of the largest technology companies in the world, and they are a leader in this. Microsoft Edge was kind of considered kicked to the curb until this came about. So there is this re-innovation that is happening all of the time, and that's part of what we all want to embrace. Um, everybody should have a CRM. That's a contact management system. It technically stands for Customer Relationship Management. 
an old fashioned or a new fashion word for a Rolodex, again, for those of you over 29. Um, someone said they bought one on eBay just to, share their, to show their teenage kids. I thought that was kind of fun. Um, you want to embrace LinkedIn. And one reason for you to really embrace LinkedIn is this is still one of the best ways for people to find you and be in touch with you about your business. So this is an incredible tool. It now has 900 million users worldwide. Um, it is a terrific way for you to get hold of people, ask them questions, and get yourself out there. So if you have not been revisiting your LinkedIn profile recently, maybe get together as a team and say, you know what we should do as a team, we should all learn how to talk about each other and help us build that out. Um, Canva is what I use to create these slides. It's easy to share. Back in the day, you know, you had those things you wrote on sheets and then you printed it and, you know, oh my gosh, it was just a, really a headache. Slack and other productivity tools, my team who helps me out with all of this, were in England, Columbia, South America, Florida, and Georgia, and South Carolina. I've never met any of them in person. I've never met any of them in person. Now we've established a lot of trust and a lot of connections. So virtual and, you know, that stuff doesn't necessarily mean I don't trust you. There's actually a lot of people who live near me I don't trust. <laughs> I live in downtown Boston next to the TD Garden. One time I went down to the trash room and there was someone sleeping there. You almost found me on the moon. Um, you know, I was like, <laughs> and the person who let him in no longer lives there. <laughs> um, Google, if you want to be afraid of anything, be afraid of Google. I mean, Google knows everything, how I got here, what roads I took, where I stopped, you know, I mean, how long it took me to get here. Um, I sometimes get nervous that um, the, uh, the um, transponder on the Mass Pike is going to give me a speeding ticket. <laughs> because if I go from this one and that one, how fast? I was definitely speeding. <laughs> so there, you know, technology is around us all of the time. So part of it is, you know, there are good things and bad things about all of this. It's just how we think about it. Um, one time I was near the uh, Fenway Park and I ran the light and got pulled over and the cop says, license and registration, pink light, here's my registration. I was wrong. And he says, I've never heard all of that before. And I said, I live around the corner. You're going to know that in a minute when you see my registration. <laughs> Two, you're going to find out I really don't have any kind of a record. And it was kind of a pink light because I was speeding, right? <laughs> he said, come back. He says, darling, don't ever do that again. I said, okay. <laughs> Nothing beats the human mind. Nothing beats the human mind. If you're, I'm a former school teacher, the things that kids would come up with. Um, I asked ChatPT, chat, PGPT, what is 20? It says it's a number between 19 and 21. Really? One time when I was working with the gifted children, when I was a uh, junior high school teacher, I asked them what was 20? 10 sets of twins. That's the human mind. That's the human mind. So part of it is let's use both because this curiosity and things like that are absolutely amazing. All right, that's my formal remarks. I'm happy to answer any questions. I think, do I have a little bit of time left? Two or three minutes or I got one minute? <laughs> Two minutes? All right, any questions? Yes? Um, when it comes to the subject of plagiarism with ChatGPT, my understanding is that you can also choose for it to write in, uh, in a certain fashion. Like I want to have this, um, I want to have a description of black holes <clears throat> as if um, Shakespeare wrote it or something yep. like that. So at, at this point in time, like, what is, is there any actual legal ramification if you're not citing that as partially made with AI? I, I understand your advice to, to put it out there because why not? But is there any actual uh, push for this being plagiarism? Um, or any yep. That you can, the that can be like that? So the quick answer I would say is probably not yet, but it will. So I think at one point, you know, uh, the Kardashians are not my fa favorite people, but at one point, they didn't have to disclose that they were being paid. Now they do have to disclose they're being paid. You know, I would like to have John Travolta and all the people who are on the Capital One ads display and disclose how much they're paid. I mean, I do think there's a, a lack of transparency. So if, we're, if we start transparent, I think it's gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, any other question, one more? 
On your tables is a chart called How to Work a Room. There's a QR code there. You can QR code that and get a copy of that chart, and you are more than welcome to share it with your teams. My cards is there, are, th are there as well. You can see they were designed by a 25-year-old because the font's kind of little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. One last question? No? All right. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Diane. We have a little uh, token of our uh, appreciation. Thank you so much. Chamber pen. And they work really good. So. Okay. So if you, if you noticed, uh, you all have uh, gift bags, uh, on, you know, that were on your chair. What? Oh. Okay. So if you haven't already uh, looked in your bag, there is a signed copy of Diane's book in your uh, in your bag. Today, the Chamber and Bank of America are pleased to celebrate business achievement with a presentation of the 2023 Entrepreneur and Small Business Awards this year. We want to thank all of those who submitted nominations for the awards. We had a number of very strong candidates making this year's uh, decision much more difficult. The nominating committee looked for companies that balance success with commitment to the community. Each nominee is rated on five criteria. Number of employees, staying power, growth, social responsibility, and innovation in their process and or product. And to meet just a few of these criteria is a significant accomplishment. Now to assist with the presentation, I ask that uh, Chris Cooney, president of the chamber, Our Bank of America representative, Nancy Rosedale, come up to the podium. Senator Michael Brady, Representative Rita Mendez, and John Messier of the, of the Mayor's Office to come up. The Entrepreneur of the Year Award recognizes innovative individuals whose businesses have grown through their commitment to their customers, their product, and their community. The Metro Sub Chamber and Bank of America Small Business Services are pleased to present the 2023 Entrepreneur of the Year Award to Brockton Beer Company. Let me tell you a bit about Brockton uh, Beer Company. Brockton Beer was established just a few years ago and opened a brewery on Main Street in Brockton one year ago this month. It's owned by five families who believe deeply in Brockton. Founders, Pierre Alexandra, Rowan Olmsted, Eval Silveria, Letitia Silvera, and Ed Cabellan stated, and I quote, as long-term Brockton residents, we know it's time to create a brewery that shares all the values of the city we live, work, and play in. It's our focus to use the inspirations of our city and its heritage to create outstanding craft beer. Combined, they have invested more than $1.3 million to get their production facilities uh, up and running and their brew pub running as well. Crafted for community, Brockton Beer Company and the new brew pub, Brockton's First, reflects the owner's commitment to the City of Champions. The new Brockton Beer Company Brew Pub, Brew Pub excuse me, is a wonderful meeting space at the literal center of this city. Increasingly, it hosts wonderful conversation, diverse music, excellent food, and of course, a wide variety of finely crafted beers. On June 3rd, the brewery will host a Culture on Tap Festival to celebrate the city, the region, and also to help kick off Metro South's Restaurant Week, as Chris mentioned, going to be June 4th through 8th this year. The Metro South Chamber of Commerce and Bank of America are proud to announce Brockton Beer Company as the 2023 Entrepreneur of the Year. Here to accept this award, Ed Cabellan. Would you like to share a few words? Thank you very much. 
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here uh, representing Brockton Beer Company on behalf of the ownership group uh, and our outstanding team. I'd like to thank the Metro South Chamber, our nominees, uh, for this incredible honor. That's a new small business uh, here in the Commonwealth. Uh, it's trying to make a difference here in Brockton and the surrounding areas. Recognitions such as this are incredibly humbling. We started Brockton Beer Company in 2018 and throughout our collective journey, from idea uh, to our brick and mortar uh, brew pub at 121 Main Street, um, I wanna share quickly just four themes and um, you know, that, that we've learned over the last year. First is resiliency, which has come up uh, already. Uh, and I look out in this room and I see the mayor's office represented, I see our colleagues at the Brockton Redevelopment Authority represented, um, and I'm grateful for their support in, in our resiliency. It's been challenging the last few years as a small business owner making this work, but we believed in our vision and wanted to see it to fruition. Second is diversity. We are very proud to be one of the most diverse brewery brew pub ownership groups in the Commonwealth with a six black owned brewery, and as I understand it, the first Asian brewery as well. Uh, this diversity doesn't just show up in race though. It shows up in the diversity of our professional skill sets, our backgrounds, and our personalities that focus on the collective success of this enterprise. Third is community. As posted proudly, uh, as you just read, uh, we are crafted for community. Everything we do in our craft beer, food, and events is focused on building and sustaining this wonderful community of ours. And we're proud of the impact we've made so far and we've only just begun. Fourth is surprise. We often hear that a, a hint of surprise uh, whenever folks come into the brew pub. They surprise at how beautiful the space is, how great our craft food and food actually are, or how a brewery could actually work in downtown Brockton. Our team, however, is not surprised. We are setting a new standard for Brockton. Where better begins, right? And if you haven't been downtown lately, I promise you it's better than you remember. In closing, I'd like to thank our Brockton Beer team who are out doing the, doing the good work, uh, and I'm grateful for everything they do every day. I couldn't have picked a better group of folks to work on this project with and the impact it's making on our community. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to be brief because we have Congressman Lynch coming into downtown Brockton. We got some funding for great water initiatives, and without water, none of these businesses would survive. So we're supportive of getting clean water to these businesses. But I'm not going to read the whole thing in the essence of time. But this is to the Brockton Beer Company in recognition of your receiving this award, and thank you for all you do. And I'll tell you, years ago I worked at Superior Bakery with my brother. I delivered to a lot of restaurants. And you go in the back door of a restaurant and you find out if it's clean or not. He has one of the most pristine, cleanest restaurants in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Never mind Brockton, and the food is great. Never mind the beers. Thank you. <laughs> seeing that place and having a vision and not giving up on Brockton. So we also have a citation from the House of Representatives. They were just so proud of you today. And um, we just wish you your achievement on being the entrepreneur of the year to the Brockton Beer Company. We're just so proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Yes, I, in, in a timely manner, this is a citation from the mayor, city of Brockton. Fabulous, fantastic job. Great, great stride for the city of Brockton, city of champions. Thank you. Thank you. you guys all stay up here, okay? Yeah, you can all stay up. Yeah, you stay up here. Okay. Next, we move on to the Small Business of the Year Award. Uh, which recognizes business leadership, which has fostered company growth, created new jobs while contributing to the community. The 2023 Small Business of the Year Award is presented to Healthier You Wellness Partners. Right. 
Let me share a little bit about. There, yeah, okay. Yeah, let me share a little bit about uh, our honoree. Healthier You Wellness Partners provides state of the art health and wellness services to Massachusetts residents in a wide range of settings, including clients' homes, their newly purchased headquarters on 340 Pleasant Street, Brockton, and through their recently expanded Healthier You family of companies. And these include Healthier You Adult Foster Care, Plus Care Home Care Agency, DOC, which is Diabetes, Obesity, and Cancer Wellness Programs, and Trust Business and Consulting, which provides a broad spectrum of business development and employment resources to healthcare, retail, and manufacturing industries. Marnite Dolan is the Chief Executive Officer of Healthier U Wellness Partners and has been advancing the organization over the past several years. She and her 35 employees have grown the business after identifying a need in the community while working for health care facilities in Brockton. The Metro South Chamber of Commerce and the Bank of America are proud to announce Healthier You Wellness Partners of Brockton as the 2023 Small Business of the Year Award. <laughs> Representing Healthier You Wellness Partners here to accept the award is Marnay Dole. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am so grateful and honored to be receiving this award today. As CEO of Healthier You, I am happy and honored to be part of Healthier You's mission to provide compassionate and caring healthcare services to help patients to continue living at home. I recognize that our team is dedicated to serving the community. And um, we could not have achieved this without the staff support, our clients, and the caregivers. I am taking this amazing opportunity to thank the committee of small business entrepreneurs for nominating Healthier You to be part of this momentous event. And I also would like to thank all the sponsors. I would like to thank the staff of Healthier You for their hard work in coordinating care to our consumers and been flexible, especially during the epidemic. None of these amazing service and care provided by Healthier You would be possible without the staff. So this award reflects our team hard work, compassion, and dedication to the city of Brockton and surroundings areas. On behalf of our team, we thank you. We thank you for recognizing us and we look forward to partnership with you all in the near future. Thank you very much. On behalf of Brockton City and the Mayor's Office, I want to present this to you for your distinguished award and to your team. Congratulations. And also from the House of Representatives, we want to present to you Healthy You Wellness Partners, your achievement on being the small businesses of the year. We're so proud of you. Congratulations. 
Now we have very wanted for you to expand it in the city of Brockton, and it's right on the corner of Belmont Avenue and Pleasant Street, which I only live about a block away. I live on the corner of Greenfield Street, and Dr. Greenfield lived in the neighborhood, and his office was right where you are now. We're so proud that you have entered into that establishment and expanded, and I think it should be called Healthy Me, because i got to get in there and become a healthy God bless you. And in essence, also, Haitian Flag Day, congratulations as well. The Chamber joins with Bank of America in extending congratulations to both of these fine businesses and to all our members for their success in business as well. Thank you all for participation in today's program. Now a quick uh, Chamber update. The Chamber will hold a business after hours at the Holbrook branch of Abington Bank on Wednesday, May 24th, where Red Sox tickets will go to some lucky attendee. Doors will be open at 5 p.m. The Chamber will hold a ribbon cutting at South Shore Bank's new branch at Michael's Plaza in Brockton on June 1st. Uh, the time is 11.45 to 1.30 p.m. This event will also feature Brax and Montilio's Bakery to help kick off Restaurant Week. The Chamber will present the 25th Annual Athena Award on June 16th to an exceptional individual who has achieved business excellence and has assisted women in reaching their full potential as in leadership. Please plan to join us right here in this room on Friday, June 16th for this luncheon celebration. The Chamber will hold the second annual Metro South Restaurant Week, as, as Chris had mentioned, June 4th through the 8th, and see the Chamber's website for more details. Okay, I want to thank a few people here. Of course, Bank of America Small Business Services. Mass Hire Greater Brockton Workforce Board. Our Awards Committee. The Enterprise News. Brockton Community Access, and all of our elected fit officials in attendance. Board members and ambassadors in attendance, chamber staff, and last but not least, Rich Morgan Photography. Hey! Finally, I'd like to uh, draw your attention to today's uh, giveaway items uh, at, at e on each chair as you came in. Uh, there was a very special bag promoting Seasonal Farmer's Market, held every Friday at Brockton City Hall, Prava. A wonderful book by our speaker, Diane Darling, on networking, a beer, <laughs> unless you were sitting in one certain table, <laughs> and an item from today's supporting sponsor, Mass Hire, Greater Brockton Workforce Board, and finally, a handsome Regional Restaurant Week apron. These are for everyone to take home, so please enjoy. So thank you all for your support of the Chamber and our community. Please enjoy your weekend. Oh, and by the way, if you're not lucky enough to get Taylor Swift concert tickets, remember her advice. Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs>